Our Sunday School lesson this week is about trials. Every single person living in this world today will face struggle, we will have hardships, we're gonna have heartaches, we're gonna have pains, we're gonna have our burdens, we're gonna have our worries. We're gonna have things that terrify us, that, that makes us anxious. So we're gonna have tribulation, in other words. And in our tribulation, we find that there are gonna be two things that can happen. We will either be broken by what it is that we go through, or we will overcome what it is that we go through. For the believer, we put our faith in the Lord in everything, especially in all that we go through. And so whatever it is that we go through, we must have the faith that we are going to overcome, that we will not be defeated, that we will not be destroyed by whatever it is that we are dealing with, whatever it is that we are going through. We have faith in Christ. Christ himself tells us, he didn't try to hide this at all from us. Christ tells us that we are going to have tribulation, but this is the kicker. Christ tells us to put our faith in him, to lean on him, to depend on him, to trust in him, because he has already overcome sin. He's overcome our burdens. He's overcome the things that makes us anxious. He's already overcome the world. And so when we put our faith in him, we are putting our faith in the one that has already overcome. We are putting our faith in the one that can lift us up over all the obstacles that we face in our life, all those trials and those tribulations, we are putting in our faith that can carry us up over those hills and those mountains and through those valleys as well. So when it comes to trials, when it comes to temptation, when it comes to tribulation, it is very important for how we respond. Do we remain steadfast in our faith or do we panic? Do we worry? Now, this is a topic that I'm going to get on in my sermon this week as well. So be sure that you take a look at that video as well. And if you want to, there is a commentary on our website to where you can go and you can read that commentary, a fuller commentary. You can listen to a full commentary audio of this Sunday School lesson as well. And that's at the website. The links uh, to the lesson is in the description below as well. But let's go ahead and let's dive into our Sunday school lesson here to see what James said about going through our trials and how we are blessed amid our trials today. We'll see here in the second, the third, and the fourth verse here in our Sunday school lesson this week that James says to us that we ought to count it all joy when we fall into various trials. This is a very interesting statement because this is the last thing that anybody wants to do is to rejoice when they fall into various trials. But James again said that we should count it all joy rather than fret, rather than worry. Our immediate response, it seems, when trouble comes our way, when we are dealing with our hardships, when we are in our trials and in our tribulation, it is to panic. It is to worry. And frankly, this is very understandable. However, again, as believers, we ought not do this. We ought not panic. We ought not worry when it comes to all that we are going through. And the reason why I say this again is because we have God on our side. Again, with God on our side, we must understand that the Lord is not going to let us be defeated. We must understand that God is all powerful, right? Uh, God is sovereign. He has authority over all things, those things that are known, those things that are unknown. He has the power. The control is in his hands. And so, again, we must put our faith in his hands. We must put our faith in his deliverance rather than worrying about things that are beyond our control. And again, I said this a few weeks ago as well when it comes to anxiety our biggest worry is always about the things that are beyond our control. But this is the thing. The things that are beyond our control, they are in the Lord's hands. So we must put our trust in the Lord's hands that God is going to deliver us from those hardships, those aches, those pains. God is going to deliver us in our trials and in our tribulations. We are strengthened by the Lord. And so we find in our trials, we find in our tribulations that we must be steadfast. In other words, we must be patient. As James says there, we should let patience have its work. 
And we find again that in our trials, our patience, should we continue to lean on the Lord? Should we continue to depend on him? Our patience, it is completed. It is strengthened. So that the next time we find ourselves falling into a trial, so that the next time when struggle and problems come our way, we know that we can overcome. We already have the strength to be able to endure. We already know that we can make it. The reason why we know that we can make it is because we are putting our faith in the hands of the one who has already overcome the world. You and I, we don't have to try and take on all of our problems, all of our struggles. We don't have to try to take those things on by ourselves. All we have to do is have faith, have faith in the Lord. Okay. All right, so we'll see here in the next verse, here in the fifth verse, we'll see where James essentially speaks to this thought. James, I believe he understood very well the thought of someone saying, hey, preacher, that's easier said than done. It is easy for you to say, have faith. But it is hard for me to have faith when things aren't going my way. When I feel like problems keep compounding and stacking up on me, it is hard for me to have faith. Again, James did not want anyone to think that they had to go through all of their trials by themselves. None of us have to do that. No, in our trials, James said that we should be prayerful. Who is it that we should pray to? Well, we should be praying to the Lord. We should always be praying to the Lord for his strength to be able to endure. We should be praying for his strength to be able to make it through anything that we are going through all of our trials and all of our tribulations, we should be praying about them. There is power, I tell you, in prayer. But again, sadly, there are many people who hesitate. There are many people who doubt prayer. They doubt prayer because they doubt the Lord. See, the prayers that we pray, they are to be prayers of faith. You and I we should never question. We should never hesitate. We should never doubt the power of God. Therefore, we should not be someone who doubts the power of prayer. Prayer is our line of communication. It is the most powerful weapon that we as believers have. When we can go through the doors that have been opened to us to God, when we can go to through those doors and we can go boldly before his throne with all supplication in our heart and let everything that is on our heart be made known to the Lord, knowing that God can do something about it, that is power. And that is a tool, that is a weapon that the believers should always use. We should not hesitate when it comes to using that weapon. We should not doubt when it comes to the power of God. Always be prayerful. Always pray a prayer of faith to the Lord in your trials. This is how we are blessed amid our trials. We are blessed amid our trials because we have God and because we have prayer, because we can do something about what it is that we are going through. And that's something that we can do is pray because we know that when we pray that God is going to fix whatever it is that we are dealing with, he's going to fix our problems. He's going to handle Whatever it is that we are going through, we know that in our trials, that when we pray to God, he's going to lift us up over all of those obstacles that we face. And so that's why we see James say there in the sixth, in the seventh, and in the eighth verse there. That is why we see James say there that the prayers we pray, they must be prayers of faith. Again, James says it best there. They're like a wave that is tossed to and fro. They are double-minded. And I tell you, a double-minded person is one who is not committed. A double-minded person is one who is not committed in their faith. How is the Lord ever going to move on the behalf of one who doubts him, who does not trust in him? That simply just does not make any sense. Would you move for anyone who doubts that you are able, who doubts that you are capable? I don't believe for one second that you would do that. I know personally myself, it's hard for me to move for someone who's always constantly doubting what it is that I am capable and able to do. Some will say, well, maybe you won't need to prove yourself. Well, I would say to them, I don't need to prove myself. And the Lord certainly does not need to prove himself as well. God has already done enough to prove himself to us. He proved this 
by giving us his only begotten son again we have made it this far in our life not by our own power we have made it this far in our life not by our own might we have made it this far in our life because of the lord because of his strength because of his mercy because of his grace because of his grace i should say and again because of his mercy because of his power we have made it this far along the way okay all right i want to skip down to the 12th verse here here and in, in the 12th verse we'll see where james he takes it a step further there right james he says that all of us we are able to endure we are able to endure not because of our own power not because of our own might we are able to endure for the lord and because we endure james he says that we will receive an even greater reward he says that we will receive the crown of life or as paul called it in the ninth chapter of first corinthians the imperishable the crown this crown it cannot be destroyed it cannot perish it cannot go away to timothy Paul called this crown the crown of righteousness. So this is a crown that is rewarded to all of those who live with genuine faith in the Lord. They were not moved out of faith. They remained steadfast. They or we, we remained obedient. And because we remained obedient, because we walked in his way, in his instructions, we were able to endure. We were able to persevere through all that life throws at us, through all of our trials and through all of our tribulation, through temptations, we remain faithful. And because we remain faithful, James says that there is a reward. Paul said that there was a reward. Jesus himself said that there is a reward that is waiting for us. And that reward again is a crown that will not perish. It is an eternal crown. So therefore our reward because of our faith, because we remain faithful through our trials, our reward is an eternal reward. As we see there in the 12th verse, James wrote, we will receive this crown after we have been approved. This approval that James is speaking of there is when we go before the judgment seat of Christ. Don't worry about that judgment seat of Christ. You have nothing to fear about the judgment seat of Christ because at the judgment seat of Christ, is where all genuine believers will stand. Nobody who is wicked will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Those that are wicked, they will stand before the great white throne. We who are righteous, we will never stand before the great white throne. We will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and at the judgment seat of Christ is where we will be rewarded for how we ran our race of faith, how we walked our race of faith, if you will, or how we fought that good fight of faith. Now, here in the closing verses of our Sunday school lesson here in the 13th, the 14th and the 15th verse, James, he begins to speak to those who would accuse the Lord of tempting them. This often happens. Believe it or not, there are many people who in their trials and who in their tribulation, they blame God. They accuse God of tempting them in whatever it is that they are going through. Boy, boy, boy should we watch doing this james he says there that the thought of god tempting us again while it is very common it makes no sense the reason why it makes no sense is because the lord does not tempt us to sin the lord is unable to tempt us to sin because the lord does not know sin Yes, the Lord will allow us to go through trials. Yes, the Lord will allow us to go through tribulation so that our faith can be strengthened. But God is never going to tempt you to sin. And again, the reason why God does not tempt anyone to sin is because the Lord doesn't want you to sin in the first place. Think about this, right? God has called for us to repent. He sent his only begotten son to reconcile, to restore harmony between himself and us. All the Lord wants you to do is to come back to him. So why would he tempt you to do wickedness? Why would God want you to do wickedness? The Lord does not want you to do wickedness. So, so never think for a second that God is tempting you to sin. God isn't tempting you to sin. The Lord wants you to trust in him, to believe in him. God wants you to be obedient. 
He wants you to have faith. That is what the Lord wants out of you. So we'll see there in the 16th, the 17th, and in the 18th verse, in the closing of our Sunday school lesson today, we'll see again that the Lord desires for us to be of faith. He desires to bless us so that we can be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Again, as you have heard me preach all of the month of January, the Lord wants us to return back to our holiness in which he created us in. Let us remember, God created us in his image and in his likeness. He created us to be holy and righteous. God did not create you to be a sinner. Again, God doesn't tempt anyone to sin. He wants you to be of faith because the Lord wants you to be holy. The Lord wants you to be righteous. He wants to dwell with you eternally. God wants you to receive that crown of life, that crown of righteousness. He wants you to receive that imperishable crown as well. So what did we learn today? Today, we learned not to panic in our trials and in our tribulations. We have no need of, of panic. We don't have to fret. We don't have to worry again because the Lord is on our side. So the only thing we should be doing when it comes to our trials and our tribulation is have faith. So we learned that we should be faithful. We learned that we should depend on the Lord. And when we depend on him, we are going to overcome. We're going to make it through our trials. We're going to make it through our tribulations. So again, we learned that God desires for us to endure. The Lord desires for us to endure so that we can again become holy, so that we can become righteous, so that we can dwell eternally with him. So therefore, we also learned that our faith will help us to endure. Our faith will help us to be able to persevere, to be able to make it through our trials and through our tribulations, to be able to help us in this life, being able to, again, overcome the world itself. And so lastly, we learned that our faith will lead to us again, overcoming and receiving that crown, that imperishable crown, a crown that is rewarded because of our faith. Because again, we endured, we made it through all of our trials. Okay. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson for this week. Again, if you want to take a deeper dive into our Sunday school lesson, I have audio. There is text, a commentary that you can find at newfoundfaith.org. The link is in the description below so that you can read the commentary or so that you can listen to the audio commentary as well. Again, I hope that all of you will come back for next week's Sunday school lesson as well. And I hope that you will share this video with someone somewhere. Until next time again, let us continue to keep one another lifted up in prayer. And again, treat all people with grace and love. That is our calling as a child of God to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Until next time again, I'll continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers. And I pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you.